The violin was developed in the 1500s, evolving from a series of guitar-like instruments that musicians played with a bow. While the violin is best known for classical and gypsy music, today you hear it in pop, country, bluegrass, even jazz. First, they cut a piece of maple, then split it in half to expose the grain in mirror image. They melt down glue flakes made from animal hide, then bond the pieces together. Violin makers only use glue, never nails or screws. These pieces of wood will form the back of the violin. After four hours, the glue is dry and they can remove the clamps. Using a small plane, they even out the surface. Then they trace the violin's shape and cut it out. They shave the surface, sculpting a downward slope from the middle using an even smaller plane. Then they carve a groove along the circumference. After dabbing it with glue, they insert what's known as purfling, a reinforcement made from a thin strip of hard wood, usually maple. Finally, they carve the reverse side to the right form and thickness. Next, they make the sides of the violin, known as the ribs. First, they soak thin strips of maple or sycamore and press them against a heated bending iron to curve them. Then they glue the strips around a form, connecting them at the top and bottom and at the corners with small blocks of wood. They clamp everything together and let the glue dry for four hours. Next, they glue thin strips of wood called counter ribs onto the edge of the ribs. This enlarges the surface so that it's easier to glue the ribs and the back together. They make the violin's front or belly from a solid piece of spruce. To the underside, they glue a spruce support bar called the base bar. Sound escapes through the two curved slots called F-holes. They cut out and carved the violin's neck and scrolled head from a piece of maple. Then they glue it to the body. They sculpt the fingerboard from ebony, a hard wood that's durable enough to withstand centuries of violinist fingering. Using a tool called a peg hole reamer, they make holes for the ebony or rosewood pegs around which the strings are wound. They coat the wood with four or five coats of varnish, depending on the color. Then polish it with several coats of oil over several days until the finish is shiny and silky smooth. Next, they insert the sound post. This little cylinder conducts sound and supports the belly against bowing pressure, so it's critical to position it in precisely the right spot between the belly and the back. It's not glued, but rather wedged into place. The bridge isn't glued either. It's held in place by the pressure of the four strings, which they feed through the ebony tailpiece and wind onto the pegs. The bridge has little notches in which the strings sit. The violin is finished. They make the bow from horsehair and a high-quality Brazilian wood called Pernambuco. They bind the hairs at one end with strong sewing thread, then burn them and seal them with wax to prevent fraying. This end goes into the frog, the wooden box at the bottom or heel of the bow. They cover the frog with a mother of pearl lining, then slip on a ring made of nickel, silver, or gold to prevent the hairs from tangling. Next comes the screw that controls the tension of the hairs. They comb the hairs to make them parallel, then insert them into the tip of the bow, known as the head. They tighten the screw until the hairs are taut. Finally, they rub on rosin, a sticky pine tree resin that keeps the bow from slipping off the strings.